In this video, I want to look at the, the worst case scenario. You found some data online, uh, so you want to use it, but it's not available in some nice standardized format. There's no CSV to download, there's no XML feed, there's no API, there's no processing library that takes care of it for you. There's nothing but the, the web page itself. And, and this can apply to other scenarios where the data is in some strange, unrecognizable format. So let's, uh, let's look at a kind of a, a, a scenario here. Um, so let's say you wanted to make some type of data visualization about uh, movies and you look at imdb.com and you say, aha, everything I ever needed to know, everything, every piece of data that I need is here somehow in this uh, website. Well, if you search around, there's no API, there's no XML feed, I mean, maybe there is, but I haven't, I haven't found one. And so, but the data is there. Um, for example, let's say I, what I need is the year of a particular movie, or I need the length, how long was that movie, 139 minutes. Well, 139 minutes is here on the page there is a URL for this page. I should be able to get that URL into processing and somehow find that piece of data. How do you do that? Okay, so there's, uh, there's a few things that uh, to kind of discuss and look at, and, and we'll come back to the actual page itself. So uh, we, need to, we need a mechanism for searching within a string. Now, a great way to do this is with something called uh, regular expressions. Uh, regular expressions is a bit beyond the scope of this particular set of videos about data and processing. So I'm just going to leave that aside, I'm just going to mention it. You might look at the match function or the match all function in processing, which uses regular expressions to match a particular pattern, to search for a pattern in a body of text. And perhaps someday I will add a video or some materials about regular expressions and processing. But for now, we're going to do it in a bit more of a rudimentary way using two uh, string functions in processing that I don't believe we've seen yet. One is index of, and the other is substring. So let's say we have a particular uh, a piece of text, a string s equals I have. 21 apples. And let's say, you know, you could think of the context of, oh, I go to a web page, and every single time I go to that web page, it says, I have some number apples. Well, how would I pull only that number out? You know, uh, the human being, us, we could just look at that and say, oh, it's right here, it's 21, it's the thing that's digits, and it's in between have and apples, and that's the number. But how do we do that programmatically? Well, in uh, processing, what we could say is, okay, let's say the, it was always formatted this way, just this number was sometimes different. Sometimes, oh, you can't see that. Sometimes it's two digits, sometimes it's uh, three digits, sometimes it's one digit, but it always comes after have space, and it always comes before space apples. So what if I could find wherever have is, what if I could find wherever apples is, index of will search for the index of a particular string inside of a string, and then substring will pull out a substring. What if I could then pull out all of the characters in between these two points? In other words, I'm saying, what if I were to say int begin equals s dot index of have, and int end equals s dot index of apples and then string num equals s dot substring between that beginning and that end. Now, now, there's a few little details here, things that we've missed, and this won't work exactly as intended, but we'll, we'll correct those in a moment. But before we do that, let's come back to the IMDb site. Now, you know, I should also mention something. If we go and look at the terms of service of the IMDb site, I don't believe that it's, uh, that it probably says something like you cannot, you know, mine our data, resell it, that type of thing. This, you know, so what we're doing here is, you know, there's some questions around it, but purely for an academic exercise here, uh, uh, certainly, I want to look at how we could go and pull out a piece of data by requesting this information. So, um, uh, okay, so what, what do we do? What, what's the actual data we're getting into processing? Let's say we're looking for hundred that the amount of the length of the movie Mary Poppins, 139 minutes. So if I go up here, view developer, view source, we can now see this is actually what we're going to get into processing. And this is just a big mess of stuff. This is why it's much, it's really preferable to have our data as 
tabular data, XML, JSON, some standardized format that's kind of ready for us. But in theory, somewhere in here, if I search for 139 minutes, ah, we can see there it is right here. That's where the piece of data is in the raw HTML source. And it kind of looks like it probably comes after this tag time item prop equals duration, and then it comes right before that close tag. So this is, you know, this is a much larger piece of text. This is why we need to do this kind of searching, because for every movie, the page might be formatted in the same way, but the actual piece of information is going to be a slightly different spot, because the title of the movie is going to be the same. That's going to change the number of characters, all that sort of stuff. So let's look, let's, let's come back here for a second. Okay, there's a couple things. What are the things we missed here? One is, what, does, what value does this actually give us? Index of have. Well, a string is much like an array where each character has a unique index. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0. So h is actually going to give us the number 2. I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, let me write this again. <laughs> 0, 1. I really got to get better at this whiteboard thing. Uh, 0, 1, 2. H is going to give us the index value 2. It's the third character. So when we ask for a substring between 2 and some other character, we're going to end up getting have 21, which is not what we want. We want to actually start right here where the 2 is. But what is the length of the string have with a space? One, two, three, four, five. So I could say that begin index, is, the begin spot for 21 is the index of have plus the length of have. So I want to jump from the beginning to the end of that word. So when we look at the actual code, you're going to see that's happening. The beginning of the piece of data we're trying to pull out is where we find this, the end of where we find that. Now, with apples, um, this actually is fine for us. Assuming this was actually space apples, we would get this character here. I don't want this character included in my substring, but an interesting nuance of the way substring works is the first index is included and the end one is not included. So in other words, if I have the string hello and I ask for the substring between 1 and 3, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. It's actually just going to give me the characters 1 and 2. It includes the first index, but it does not include the last index. It might seem like a weird thing, like, oh, this is kind of annoying. This seems to be like very confusing. But it actually makes sense, because if I were to say 3 minus 1 is 2, that's the length of the substring we pulled out. It also works really nicely if I want a substring from somewhere in the string all the way to the end, that I can just put s.length, the length of the string there, and it will work. OK, so that, those are two little pieces of information. Another piece of information that I should mention is, what if I say, give me the index of you know, Joe in the word hello? Well, Joe doesn't appear. What value should I get back from index of? I know I'd get the numerical index of the string I'm searching for. But if that doesn't exist, what do I get back? And you should know that processing or the index, that's not processing, Java, the index of function of the string class will give you a negative one. And that makes a lot of sense because negative one is not a valid index. There are no index values less than zero in, uh, in a, an array or in a string. So as when we go back and look at this particular code example, what you're going to see if I find where this is happening, and you can see here we go. Uh, let me find this. You can say, ah, there is a start and there is an end. And I want the text in between that. I want the index of this and I want the index of that and I want the stuff that's in between. But look, there's this function, give me text between. Oh, why did we do any of this? There's just a function called give me text between. Uh, there isn't. So this is a function that, that, is that I wrote for this particular example, which will pull out a chunk of data in between, from a particular string in between a beginning and an end. And if we look down at that function, you'll see uh, find the index of before, find the index of after, and give me the substring between the start and the end. And you'll notice that if I ever get a negative 1, we just return back an empty string. So this, it will, this, will, this will make the function not fail if it can't find that text you're looking for. It'll just give you an empty string. And you can see here where is the start is the index of before plus the length of that particular string. And that's that little piece of information we talked about here when we were trying to get not where have is, but where the end of have is. So this is a function you could use. Um, 
And I would suggest that maybe what you do is you uh, find some data online and try to uh, grab this example and use this give me text between and see if you can pull out a piece of data from a web page where the data is not in a standardized format. Okay, this concludes this particular video, which you uh, have just watched. <laughs> Thank you very much, and I will see you in another video.